Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to be doing, yeah, I know, another fantasy draft. And as we recently did the defenseman only fantasy draft, today is going to be forwards only. So, as I mentioned in the last video, I think we're going to have a better shot here because instead of replacing 12 forwards, we're replacing six defensemen, which is still going to be rough, but. I think it's possible, and if we have a good goalie, maybe it'll kind of work. Plus, we could try to specifically target some defensive forwards, so... Let's say that this one's gonna be better for now, but I suppose we'll find out. I'm gonna be honest, I don't remember how the defenseman one went, but... We're gonna see if the forward one will go better anyway. <laughs> I guess I could watch the video or just look back at the edit and see what happens. But I'm gonna randomize the team here. I'm looking at you guys and I'm going to be stopping it in three, two, one. What team do we get? It is the Columbus Blue Jackets. The jackets that are blue in color. We're gonna get pick 11. I just realized that that's the next screen. Oh, I was, you know, halfway there, you could say. Pick 22 is where Columbus will be taking their first pick and who shall we grab probably a bold strategy to go with a goalie first but i'm gonna take igor shesterkin because i think that he has the ability to carry our team my boy ovi's still here so i'm gonna draft him he will be our goal scorer we're already set what more do you need kadri will be our first line centerman he can play with ovechkin and set him up and then claude Giroux will be our first line right winger we have our first line i'm gonna take verhagi 4.184 overall. Let's go. And if Tom Wilson's still there, Tim Winston, I will be selecting him next. I do not care. Tom A. 5.1. Still signing you though. 83 overall at 3 million. That is the lowest contract I have found yet. So I'm going to be taking Duclair as a somewhat cap responsible pick. But I also saw that Kalorn wasn't extreme either. 4.4 at 84 overall. Let's go ahead and take him. We're going to need all the firepower we can get. Ooh, another good contract here. And we also have, oh, I can't take Grizzly. Never mind, I take it back. But Boone Jenner, 83 overall at 3.7 will be our next selection, which is also a very good one considering we do need another centerman. We already have three right wingers, but I don't care. I'm going to grab Marcus Felino anyway. Timothy Jimothy, I'm tempted, but well, he actually has abilities, doesn't he? He's got two. Does Fiala have abilities? No, he doesn't. That makes me want to take Timothy Jimothy, even though I want to take Fiala. We also already have four right wingers, but it doesn't matter because we're going to need defensemen anyway. And I feel like TJ is not bad defensively. Ooh, that's a good contract, Howla. Welcome to the team. Paul Stasny, 84 face-offs. And his defensive category is only three and a half. But you know what? It will have to do. So the way I look at it, we have $20 million of cap space. Our forwards are done. Forwards. We don't know where they're going to be. Craig Smith has a three and a half star defensive category. So we can maybe put him on defense again. I don't know what best lines is going to do. I'm very curious to see. Unless we find some very bargain deals, we have essentially $3 million left per player. Oh, that's a good contract. 1.2. And he's a centerman? Fire me up, Goudreau. I do want to try to find an even number of left and right wingers. It doesn't matter what wing they play. It needs to be handedness because I do want left-handed defensemen, quote unquote. Oh, wait, I just realized we still got to take a goalie so we don't have $3 million per player. Well, this got interesting. 95 discipline. Guy just never goes to the box and his contract is very, very good. What about Shiri? He's got a 85 discipline rating, three and a half star defense. Oh man, this is not easy. I think I'll go with Mojo just because 400k less, as if that makes a difference. Who's still left back here? We got the Smith at 1.8. I see Anderson down there at 1.5. Reimer at 225. Yeah, let's go with Reimer. Okay, so now we actually need three more players and we have 12 million dollars. So we get 4 million per player from all those good contracts we found, I suppose. Also, once again, I have no idea why I didn't sort by forwards this whole time. That would have made my life 10 times easier, but here we are. You know what? I got a crazy one for you. Let's sort by the defensive category and see. Okay, so we actually have some four-star players here, and Jordan Stahl is one of them. We got Sezikis as another. Henrique. Okay, he's 82 overall. I think I'm gonna take him. 5.8 is a little steep, but I think it is worth it. 6.8. So we could take Coleman and then we could take Belmar. Yeah, let's do that. All right, our final selection has been made. Let's go put these lines together and see what we have. Perfect. We have no defensemen in the NHL currently. Best lines. What are you going to give us? Or not? Nah. That's cool too. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Dash three, dash five, and dash two, baby. Even our offense doesn't have chemistry that good. Our first line's got the plus three, but other than that, it's all zeros, which is kind of shocking. Here's our goaltender situation. I don't know whether to predict 
a playoff run or not, honestly. I will confidently say that Ovechkin gets the most points, and I'll say he gets 80, but I really don't know how this is going to go for our team. I don't think we're going to make the playoffs. That's my prediction. I'll say we get 39 wins, and we're not going to make it. 3-3-0 start, so this could really go either way. 3-5... Okay, never mind. 3-4-1. and That's a little bit better. Not looking good. If we want to have a shot, we're going to have to have a dramatic turnaround, and it will have to be soon. Doesn't look like we're going to get it, though. This team is not it. We are 27 wins in at the trade deadline. Not good. I could try to just beef our team up a little bit here because obviously we want to have a shot and right now we clearly do not. I'll try to get Patch ready. He'd be a good... No way. Did they just trade him? Don't tell me it was Patch ready. They traded. Oh my word, they did. And then after that, it's basically just 83s. What a weak trade deadline. I don't know what to tell you. Let's just find out if we can turn this ship around or not, but I feel like it might be too little too late. Yeah, there you go. A first and Nick Robertson in exchange for Patch ready Ekholm and Merrill. We've had the opposite of a post-trade deadline collapse, but I still think it's too little too late. We are seventh in the division. There's not a lot of points separating us from the teams above, but it's just simply not going to happen. I was wrong even about 39. We didn't even make it that far. Even in fantasy drafts, Tampa Bay is still good. They win the President's Trophy with 106, and then the 20th placed Penguins and the 19th placed Carolina Hurricanes make it in. So the Metro was absolutely pathetic this year. So we actually did stand a chance only because of how bad our division was. We were five points back and we could have done it but nope we were not able oh Ovi got 72 points what a good number what a legend Kadri got 70 got 60 from Claude 48 from Timothy Jimothy a dash 22 from Henrik dash 24 for Verhage Mojo had a dash 25 you love to see that Igor went 28 33 and 8 with two shutouts and a 902 and then Reimer went 9 4 and 0 with a shutout a 921 and 263 you got some explaining to do there, Igor. Mackenzie Blackwood led the league with 42 Ws. He also had eight shutouts and a 915. We got a 920 from Sorokin, a 921 out of Cam Talbot. Latang was the defensive leader with 74 points. Fox had 70, and then Hughes down to 65 there. Hedman had 62. And the President's Trophy winner is Austin Matthews with 105 points and 52 goals. He ended up on the Jets. Dreisaitl was the only other player to break 100. He got 101. Nate Mack ended up with 98, Eichel 97. Time to find out who wins the Stanley Cup for this simulation. Obviously, it is not us. Seattle, their first cup in franchise history. Malkin had a stellar performance in the playoffs, playing 20 games and putting up 29 points. Kane put up 28 in 24 games. Kuzi put up 26 in 25. Matthews only played 17 games and put up 24. Jared McCann had himself a run too. 24 points in 24 games. Point a game. Jake Ottinger lit it up. He had a 932 save percentage and a 219 GAA on his way to win the Stanley Cup. Here's Tampa Bay's roster. They had Tarasenko, Kuznetsov, and Marner on their first line. What a ridiculous line one. Then they had Kane, Cobb, and Atkinson. That's a very good second line. Brodine and Drysdale as their top pair is good. And and they had Jake Allen and Nett with Ned as the backup. Seattle had DeBrusque, Dreisaitl, and Kane. Then they had Pirlini, Perfetti, and Jones. The pretty good top six. Jake Bean and Petrangelo, Klingberg and Gustafsson on pair two, which is very solid. Then they had Allmark and Jake Ottinger. Obviously, we are not winning any awards here. That was decided a long time ago. Look at that. Matthews and Line A right beside each other. But we do get Gold Caulfield with the Calder playing for the Washington Capitals. So that's good stuff. So once again, I think I assume that Matthews Matthews won the Rocket Richard, but he did not. Brad Marchand lit the lamp this year. Here you go, the final playoff tree. That's how everything went down. Not a single sweep that I can see, which is cool. But yeah, that was the forwards only draft. That one did not work out too well. Sort of expected that from the get-go, but you never know. So thank you for watching. If you have other video ideas, draft ideas, anything, be sure to leave it in the comments down below. I appreciate you guys for watching these. Hopefully I'm keeping you entertained. It's all I'm trying to do here. And on that note, I will be seeing you guys in the near future. Or soon, if you will.